in the last video, this is where I left off. And uh, I've continued to work on the routing on this. And I will slide over here. This is what my PCB currently looks like. And I'll jump into the project here momentarily. But just wanted to show the differences uh, from the last version, this uh, 0.3, so 0.03 to my 0.04 version. Uh, so for the most part, uh, the main changes would be in this area here. I've moved the DDR closer. So this was quite a ways away down here. I was thinking I needed more room to get that all routed, but I moved that closer. And then I also took the power for the uh, DDR, the 1.35, and also this uh, termination uh, 0 0.675, and pulled those much closer to what's actually going to use them. So instead of being way over here to get to the DDR, and same for the termination way over here, those are really just uh, right next door now. So those would be the main changes I've made in this version. You can see I've also shifted some other miscellaneous things, like some of this uh, boot mode selection. Uh, I've also gone through and completed a full routing. I'm not going to say I'm fully satisfied with it yet, but I do have the board fully routed, including all the length matching and differential pair setup, I believe. I have to go through and keep working on validation on a lot of this, and there's a lot of room for improvement yet, but I think I'm sitting in a decent spot. Maybe I've got some length matching or, or things to do up here, it looks like. So I'll come back to that and see what I'm missing for, for length matching. There was also a suggestion of putting in an HDMI uh, retimer. And I might actually, initially I was thinking I would just wait till the next board to do that. I'll see, I might put that in here because I've got room and it might not be such a big deal to, to add that in here. But I need to learn more about those uh, those ICs for the HDMI retimer and see if that's something I can just easily add in here or not. I'm trying not to overly complicate things, even though as I look at this, it seems like there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of stuff that could go wrong. Of course, my main goal is to get the, the, the main sock here, this uh, Zinc 7000 up and running. So for that, I'm gonna really need this and probably be able to program it through the JTAG uh, that'd probably be my simplest method to program it. And then, of course, have on the back of this, I've got the flash for it. So those would be the minimum things I've got to get up and running. And then, of course, maybe do some testing through these I.O. ports, whatever it might be. But from there, if I can get the processing system working right with the RAM, that would be a huge win. And then from there, I can move on to things like you know Ethernet. If I can make that work, great. And uh, if not, it's I, I can work on it uh, further on the next revision. Same with the SD card. Uh, same with HDMI and, and anything I might do with these expansion ports. But So I'm kind of working through uh, an order of what's most important for me to have working. But maybe I'll flip over here to the design project for this board and just talk through the changes that I've got going on. Uh, so this would be where the board is sitting, as you can see here. Uh, so let me get into the PCB side of it. Now I am back over here. I did capture maybe some notes of things that I've, I've worked on. So it's pretty much what I said. I moved the DDR, I moved the regulators, uh, to help me with the routing, I did end up doing bit swapping, and that was really helpful. And so maybe I'll come in here and just tell it that I don't want to see my copper for now. And I can go over to my layers and just maybe flip through these layers. But uh, here's my top layer. So I really was able to get, uh, there's four byte lanes here between these two DDR chips and I was able to keep all of the signals for one byte lane on the same layer so that was really helpful so when I get up here for example I've got the DM0 and then this uh, DQS0 uh, the positive and negative and then all of the data lines all on this top layer and I do have my uh, when I get into you know I guess length matching I've got that done and then, of course, on some of these signals that are differential pairs, I, I also have those length matched uh, the best I could. Uh, so been working on that, and that, that seems to be you know one byte lane that came out okay. This one came out okay. And then the other byte lanes I have sitting down 
let's see, on one of these layers, this layer here. So same type of thing uh, that I've been able to kind of keep those together. So uh, that is sitting on this uh, signal layer here. So between the top layer and the, this uh, signal layer, I was able to get those four byte lanes, uh, keeping byte lane together. The other thing that as I was getting into this, I had completely routed this and then uh, someone had made a comment on my last video that uh, mentioned that the the prime bit, the lowest bit in each of those byte lanes should still be tied to that. It shouldn't be swapped basically. Uh, so for this uh, DQ0, I have that going to DQ0. When I get to my 8, it's going to the 8. Uh, but the other bits, for example, in this first byte, I swapped around to facilitate the best routing that I could figure out. Uh, and uh, kudos to people that do this all the time. This is so time-consuming. And uh, I, uh, I know I could be doing a lot more with this. You know, Just like if even if I come back and look at this, every time I look at it, okay, there's something I can improve. And... I can do better with more work with this, but uh, right now it's sitting at a place that I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Now, while I'm pretty happy with the four byte lanes, I have some work I'd like to still improve on the address side of this. So I'm bringing down the address lines. I'm doing this connecting to uh, this uh, left or the, the lower uh, word. And from there, I then go to the other DDR and then I go to termination. I have not done any bit swapping in the address lines, and I think I could do that and, and improve my routing here. So that's on my list yet of things to do. And if I go back to the schematic, you'll just see that all my address lines over here to the right really are just uh, matching up A0 through A14, and I don't have any of this swapping going on. But as far as I can tell, the Zinc 7000 does support that, so it looks like I can... It says pins in the address control byte groups can be freely swapped within and between their byte groups. So I think I'm okay there. And it's interesting in the documentation here, I couldn't find reference to not being able to uh, move the prime bit, that first bit in each byte. But it seems like if I do other reading, there's maybe a JEDEC standard uh, for DDR that something to do with write leveling. And I don't know much about that, but I think there is a purpose for keeping that prime bit on the, the first address of each byte, or first data line of each byte, I should say. What I do plan to do is come back, maybe do some more work on the addressing and swap some of that stuff around so that I can better route the address lines, because uh, I, I think I can improve what's going on there. I did come in in, again, I'm using Easy EDA Pro here, but I can come in and do things like uh, oh, I come in here to design and set up my differential pairs. So these are all the differential pairs that for now at least I've got configured. And then I tell it, you know, what is the positive and the negative for that. Uh, I can also come in and set up my equal length groups. And you can see here I have quite a few groups that I've set up. Uh, for example, on the HDMI transmit, I might look at that and see I've got all of these set up. And then the way that I can do it in this tool is I can then go into the design, uh, basically rules, and I can set up rules for all of these. So if I want to look at HDMI transmit, I'm saying I want all of those signals between 66 and 67. If I get into differential pairs, I want all of them within 0.254 millimeters as far as length. And then I can go in and actually set up the rules. And so in the rules, I can say, okay, I have my differential pairs, uh, for example, which pair, and they're all using that default rule of being within 0.254. But then I can also get into my lengths for my uh, net length. And here I can look at all of my groups and pick which rule. So uh, all my diff different DDR rules. And uh, that's how I'm basically coming in and just making sure that when I come down to a DRC, and I do a check DRC. It's just validating uh, all of that. And then I'm right now I'm running at zero uh, errors on the DRC, which is which is good. Now I'm, I'm kind of prioritizing trying to get this DDR, you know, the best I can. And then I'll probably come back in and try to improve some of these other things, probably in order of 
importance. So like this uh, serial connection, USB serial connection, and for programming, I'm going to double check everything for length matching, uh, differential pairs, et cetera, on that next, and just really try to make sure that that is cleaned up the best it can can be. And then I'll worry about things like Ethernet and the SD card, HDMI. Those are all oh, tertiary goals for me on this board. Uh, if I can get to those, that's great. But I, I want to get this other stuff, give it priority over how I'm routing things. Coming back to this, you know, so I did the bit swapping. Uh, I've got my differential pairs, my equal lengths set up. Uh, there was also a comment to be careful about fills on the signal layers. So if I go to one of my signal layers, let's just say even the top here, and I'll go back and have it show copper again. But if I pick on the top layer this copper fill, I can choose the parent here. And I might have those filtered off. Let me turn these back on. Okay, so here I've got this copper pour. I set up a custom rule. And basically when it comes to the spacing, I've spread it out further. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing is instead of having things as tight as 0.127, uh, I'm setting it to a 0.254, uh, is something I can set here, or I can set other limits. And that's what I did here. I do have a, a custom, the network spacing uh, I put in at uh, 0.508. So that gets me into this value right here. And so that when I do a, a fill on one of these signals layer signal layers, it's going to space out that far from, from things so that I'm not too close. I think that was a concern that was expressed. So like in this case, any and all, I just did it blanket wise. So uh, any and all, it stays away from those. So if I've got some high speed lines, I should not have copper that is too close. It's uh, 0.5 millimeters away over 0.5. So I think as I understand it, uh, that should be uh, sufficient. I think anything that's maybe 0.3 or higher would be sufficient from some of the videos I've been watching. But if any of you have opinions on that, that's still not good enough, let me know. If I come back to my layers and I jump to my power layer and I look at that, you can kind of see down here, you know, all of these passives here uh, are for the termination on my DDR. And that's really taken all of this uh, 0 0.675 uh, that is being generated right down here. And I've got a fill that gets all of that covered up here. And then all of the DDR needing the 1.35, same thing. I'm getting the power coming out of that and coming up and getting all of this covered, I think, pretty well. And it's pretty close. I do have other things, of course, on my list. I might just come over here. You know, I, I again, want to increase uh, or improve the address lines, how I'm doing those. Uh, I need to add test points to the board somewhere, probably. I'll have to figure out how well I want to do that. I, I'm going to continue work on length matching, just general cleanup on the routing. Anywhere that I am doing high-speed signal vias, I'm going to put grounds around those. I've done that a fair amount up to this point, but I think there's more I can do. I think there's vias I can put in to tie some of the different uh, planes together better. I'll work on that. Uh, I do have some work to do on material and just layout of the, the board. So there's some stuff I need to, to learn on, on how to do that with uh, JLC PCB. You know, if I go over to my layers, again, I'm using a, an eight layer uh, stack up here. And if I go to physical stacking, I'm using this uh, JLC PCB. They have a named identifier for it. But you can go to JLC PCB and you can look up, you know, what are the specs for that. Uh, and that's stuff I don't know a lot about, so I'll, I'll be learning uh, about that. But this is a controlled impedance setup. So maybe uh, uh, some of this will change as I learn more. Uh, there are some comments uh, on the my last video about maybe the, the measurements that are showing up. Maybe between this and between my 3D view, it shows some information to the right that didn't maybe look right so I have some some work to do there and then I think there's also a potential that when I look at my 
uh, high speed lines here for my DDR right now on the layers. Uh, if I look at this, I've got some of those on this signal layer here. Uh, and then there's also another signal layer here and I'm using both of those, but uh, I might need to, if I can, maybe try to get some of those into this signal layer six instead of four that's closer to the power. Uh, I think if I understood a previous comment, um, that would probably be better for high speed signals versus this one right up here that's right beside the power. It is adjacent to a ground plane, but there's also a power uh, plane right above it. Anyways, I'll see if that uh, is something that I should work on or not. I would say that having two more layers on this board would be fantastic. I'd love to go to a 10 layer board just to make this all easier, but it seems like I'm, I'm getting through it. And like I said, this is fully routed on an eight layer and I've got four signal layers, top, bottom, and then two inner uh, signals here. And that I think is all connected. Now, whether or not this is workable in actual production uh, is something I'll have to, to test as I get closer to that stage. So I think that's all I have for updates for right now. Uh, I'm going to go back to here. You know, this is where the board is sitting. I am happy with the placement of all of this right here. The, the sock, the DDR, the termination, the power rails for that. You know, I do have... I think all the pieces I, I really want on here, like I said, I might add an HDMI retimer up here if uh, I can figure out that, uh, or I'll come back to that on a next major revision after I produce the first board and see what mistakes I've got. And I do have everything length matched out to the 68 pin expansion connectors. So, you know, I could add some, some simple little add-ons there to see what I can do. I would say that even though I have this fully routed, length matched, all of that, I probably still have work to do just to validate and clean up. And that's probably going to take another, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks. I'm not in any big rush. I'm just kind of chipping away at this as I have time. And I do really want to go back through all the schematic and continue to go through that and compare. And just, you know, every time I look at it, I, I catch something that I want to improve or change or find mistakes. So I want to kind of keep working through a few more passes of that. And again, watching all of uh, Phil's videos again, that uh, is going to take a lot of time. And I'm, I haven't made a lot of progress on watching them the second time. So I need to go back and do that and see what other things I catch. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. I, I continue to appreciate all the feedback and me uh, improving this to make it uh, less likely to be a failure. Uh, so any additional tips and tricks, and if you're catching things that look wrong, let me know. Thanks.